right back at you with another one and this time we have none other than get right man man stl man man stl get right some know him as can't get right stl can't get right we want to first say r.i.p so we want to put a r.i.p in front of all of the aliases that you know he he associated with and that's r.i.p to man man r.i.p get right and r.i.p can't get right we just want to get that and, and get that up right there and then we're going to jump right into this but if you haven't done so definitely subscribe 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 i'll be dropping more videos today i'll be dropping more videos tomorrow and, and for the foreseeable future as long as you guys like the content so just keep on subscribing it keeps me motivated and definitely leave comments down um in the in the comment section of the video excuse me and uh yeah man let's get started so uh, first and foremost we'll be going through uh, this report uh, from top to bottom so let's get started also uh, excuse me if you hear any banging around my kids are upstairs they're going crazy so excuse any noise um, first and foremost this is a major incident notification detail document this is a homicide of first degree murder we have a notification date of June 15th 2018 22 1800 hours Date and time, June 15th, 2018, 21, 4,900 hours. The location, 506 East 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Gas station, code 220. And on the left side of the document, we have the RD number and the event numbers as well. Number of victims, two. Number of offenders, two. Victim number one, ME number 2018-02. 810, excuse me. Wallace DeAndre, male black, 22 years, redacted, gang affiliation, gangster disciples, Gaudi world, injury description, multiple gunshot wounds to torso and extremities, condition, fatal, transported to University of Chicago Hospitals, 5815 South Maryland. Other details pronounced T2207 hours by Dr. Ann. Updated June 16, 2018, 53400 5, hours. Victim number two, ME number 2018-2809, Hampton Troy, male black, 43, redaction. Gang affiliation does not apply. Injury description, multiple gunshot wounds to torso and extremities. And I, I want to stop there. Also, it's there. There's a second victim. We must say rest in peace to the second victim as well, uh, to this Troy um, Hampton here. We have offender number one, unknown, male, black, wanted, gang affiliation, unknown affiliation. Other details: dark hooded top, dark pants. Offender number two, unknown, male, black, wanted, gang affiliation, unknown affiliation. Other details, dark clothing. By bus requested, no use of weapon, use weapon recovery, none. Weapon description, two unknown handguns, recovered property, 46 expended cartridge casings. Manner and motive, the armed offenders approached on foot and shot victims possibly gang related. Scrolling down to the narrative. This is an area central initial notification, GCCE003004. GD versus BD. This is a gang related incident. DeAndre Wallace, redacted GD, was walking with a large group of people at a gas station. Troy Hampton, redacted TVL, appeared to be sweeping the gas station lot. Two unknown male black offenders approached the lot on foot. Both offenders were armed with firearms. The offenders began to shoot at the large group. Wallace and Hampton were hit by the gunfire. The offenders fled immediate seen on foot. Wallace was in, was transported to the hospital by a private vehicle. Hampton was transported to the hospital by CFD. Wallace and Hampton were both pronounced upon arrival. Reporting detectives interviewed witnesses at the scene and, and hospital. Requests for CPD pods in this area were submitted. Reporting detectives reviewed private surveillance footage uh, video. The investigation continues. And we go down to the next uh, document we have here. Is this the homicide case folder, the initial document? All right. And the first document in this slew of 
documents here is an inventory sheet and it just uh, lists some of the things that they um, listed as inventory uh, for their documents they have some terminal history there that they looked up and so the next document we have is an original case incident report and the original occurrence location occurrence location is uh, 447 East 63rd Street Chicago Illinois in a parking lot the victim individual name Hampton Troy residence is redacted and we have male black six feet 280 pounds brown eyes brown hair unknown hairstyle unknown complexion we also have DeAndre Willis a uh, Wallace excuse me DeAndre Wallace M male black five feet ten 145 pounds brown eyes black hair unknown hairstyle complexion and we're scrolling down we have a witness um, listed here their name and residence is redacted as well as their age but they are a male black and the same for the second witness is this witness is a female black the third witness is also a male black with all of the name residence date of birth all redacted we have injury info for Hampton Troy O victim uh, CFD first aid given yes injury fatal The type of uh, weapon, weapon use, firearm, type, gunshot wound, weapon use, handgun. Um, we have the same here for DeAndre Wallace, gunshot wound, firearm, other handgun, other first aid, unknown. And this is maybe because they uh, transported him themselves to the hospital. And relationships they don't have any we have a vehicle that was damaged uh, a 2000 Buick unknown automobile style sedan four door damage yes damage description multiple gunshots to multiple areas of vehicle owner redacted possessor unknown theft from no burn no destroyed no recovered no stolen no towed no All right, and then we have some notifications and we get next, uh, the next section is a narrative, which we will read. So BWC recorded incident event number 16724 in summary. Responding officers responded to a call to a person shot at above location via OEMC. CFD ambulance number 55 on scene and treated Troy Hampton victim for one gunshot wound under the right armpit area. Responding officers met with redacted witness. Redacted witness. Redacted witness. So three witnesses who related to responding officers that they were in the above listed vehicle when they heard multiple gunshots fired by an unknown offender but did not see where they came from and could not give a description of any unknown offender or offenders. CFD Ambulance Number 55 transported Troy Hampton victim to University of Chicago Hospital where a victim was treated by Dr. Ann and was pronounced deceased at 2217 hours, ME case number 20180209. DeAndre Wallace victim walked into the University of Chicago Hospital with two gunshot wounds to the chest and was transported by an unknown make model vehicle that left the hospital. BT 306A was at the hospital with Troy Hampton victim and related to responding officers that the, dis the incident was related. DeAndre Wallace victim was treated by Dr. Ann and was pronounced deceased at 220700 hours. ME case number 20180281010. Victims given DIN notifications listed above reporting officer's canvas area for unknown offender with negative results. BT 333R guarded crime scene at location with vehicle and multiple unknown caliber shell casings. Allied body removal for Troy Hampton and DeAndre Wallace requested at 03-4800 hours. In the next section they have all the officers for the specific rankings and things that they have there. So 
So scrolling down to the next document, uh, we have um, a supplementary report that is uh, filled out by the officer themselves. So this is actually a handwritten event summary. And it says the incident is battery aggravated at this time. And they list uh, the name there. Event number 16724 in summary, responding officers were at University of Chicago for the first victim from this original incident, Hampton Troy, when responding officers discovered that these, there was a second victim. Victim listed above was dropped off by Silver Malibu according to the University of Chicago Police and security victims redacted. Attempted to retrieve vehicles plates, however, results turned out negative. Then we have another report, and this time it's a homicide document for uh, Hampton Troy. And the event number uh, 16724, in summary, responding officers was instructed to block east-west bound traffic on 63rd Street between Everhard and Vernon per 350, beat 332, move vehicle to block the eastbound traffic. We have another document. Event number 16724, in summary, responding officers were assigned to do traffic control and guarded the crime scene at 63rd and Vernon. Next document we have is a um, CAU code uh, supplementary report, which will have a lot of the um, same information that we read in terms of the victims and, and potential suspects. Um, and so we'll skim through this pretty fast because uh, I don't know if they redacted all of the uh, birth dates and things of that nature. And of course, we don't want to just, well, the purpose of these videos isn't to expose anybody. So we'll just scroll through these and try to get down to our, our witness. But as you know, it just really lists the details that we went over in both the narratives for the case. But as you can see here, we have a female black 31 years um, with their name redacted as a witness, of course. And that's a good job on CPD's part. And we have another witness that's male black four years with everything redacted and another male black seven years redacted with everything redacted. And the crime code summary is a homicide and uh, any associations and they're all unknown. And that is the end of that report. Next report we have is a uh, progress violence scene report. Um, and this was submitted um, July 22nd, 2018 at 0229 hours by James Carroll. All right, then scroll through there. You see the suspects are still unknown. They just know male black, hoodie and black pants, male hoodie with camo, black pants. And the victim took some damage. I mean, not the victim, excuse me. The vehicle took some damage, multiple gunshots to multiple areas of the vehicle. I'm just gonna scroll down see if we get to an investigation here and we do and I'm gonna start down here all right and so we have Wallace DeAndre uh, gang affiliation gangster disciples st. Lawrence boys slash Jaro City victims clothing one khaki brown cargo pants one Nike athletic shorts one orange Hanes boxer briefs two white socks two tan Timberland boots Injuries, gunshot wound, lower right torso, two gunshot wounds, right flank, three gunshot wounds, left forearm, three gunshot wounds, lower right back, two gunshot wounds, left foot, two gunshot wounds, upper left back. Transported to University of Chicago Hospital. Pronounced by Dr. Ann at 220700 hours. Family notification is redacted. And then we have the next victim, which is Troy Hampton and he has no gang affiliation. And the clothing he had it was a one, was one dark blue t-shirt, one gray shorts, one dark blue Fruit of the Loom underwear, two black socks, two white Nike gym shoes with a black trim. His injuries were a gunshot wound head slash white temple area, lodge, gunshot wound right armpit, exit left side back, gunshot wound right bicep through and through, gunshot wound right shoulder through and through, gunshot wound right forearm thrown through. Transported to University of Chicago Hospital CFD ambulance number 
55. Pronounce Pi, Dr. Ann at 2217 hours. ME number 20180289. Family notification is redacted. Weapons, handguns, capable of firing, 40 caliber ammunition. Date, day, and time of occurrence, June 15th, 2018. Friday, 214900 hours. Location, 447 East 63rd Street. Parking lot, wanted. Offender, number one, male, slender build, hooded sweatshirt with camouflage style hood, black pants. Offender, number two, male one, slender build, hooded sweatshirt, black pants. Weather and lighting, warm and humid, 75 degrees, artificial street lighting. Manner and motive, two offenders approached with handguns and fired shots at both victims, striking them numerous times, causing their death slash gang related. Vehicle use, unknown. And just glancing at some of these evidence, they are very repetitive here, but it seems to be a bunch of uh, fragments, bullet fragments, metal fragments from bullets, fired bullets uh, from the store lot and in the sidewalk. And they're inventorying all of this evidence, fired cases, fired cartridge cases, fired cartridge cases. One box containing swabs of blood that they picked up from the scene. So that's DNA evidence there. Uh, they also have, uh, seems to be filter cigarette butt recovered from the pavement in front of the Buick Regal. So it seems they would be trying to acquire some DNA evidence. Inventory, they have sealed ME blood car envelope marked DNA for DeAndre Wallace and some oral swar swabs, um, projectile, right fingernails, left fingernails, okay. And they're just inventorying everything. DVDs containing video record, rec uh, recorded from cameras located on a uh, street that's redacted and they're obtaining pod camera footage. Um, and they're, I believe, just taking pictures now of the scene. Let's scroll down past that. And there's that cigarette butt filter again. They're just canvassing the scene, and, and I would assume the victim, so we can scroll past that. All right. Uh, pod video, video, so they got pod video footage from these locations, which is um, 6301 South Wentworth, 6258 South Wentworth, and 6305 South Yale. And they have private video, which I assume is from maybe street, um, I'm not sure. I would think of maybe a business camera or something of that nature, but the address is redacted for that on 63rd Street. All right, and then they list the personnel assigned. And they have, uh, in the next uh, section of paperwork, we have witnesses, and they are redacted. Their names are, um, as expected. Persons interviewed, redacted. To be interviewed, redacted. And here we have an investigation that we'll read. Reporting detectives were assigned a homicide investigation which occurred at 4 Redacted East 63rd Street on June 15, 2018 at 2149 hours. Sergeant Murphy, number 2615, informed reporting detectives that two male subjects sustained multiple gunshot wounds. Both were transported to University of Chicago Hospital and both subjects died from their wounds. Responding detectives learned that a female witness, Redacted, remained on scene. Reporting detectives immediately responded to the scene while Detective Schur, number 21151, responded to U of C Hospital. Reporting detectives arrived on scene and spoke with Detective Murphy and Detective, Detective Sipchin. Murphy and Sipchin stated that two unknown males with handguns approached the west parking lot to the redacted located at re 4 Redacted East 63rd Street. Each fired multiple gunshots at a group of people striking two males, two male blacks. Both offenders immediately fled from the area. Witness redacted when the shooting occurred. Victim number one, KNA DeAndre Wallace, was taken to U of C by unknown persons in a four-door vehicle. Victim number two, KNA Troy Hampton, was also taken to UFC Hospital by CFE Ambulance number 55. Wallace was pronounced by Dr. Ann at 2207 hours. Hampton was pronounced by Dr. Ann at 22 1700 hours. 
Reporting detectives learned that the shooting was captured, redacted. Inform reporting detectives that, redacted, could assist in this investigation. Reporting detectives observed 63rd Street cordon off with yellow crime scene tape from Dr. Martin Luther King Drive to the west to Eberhardt to the east. The area was guarded by 3rd District officers. 63rd Street is a main art, arterial, arterial city street allowing vehicle, vehicular traffic to travel east and west. The green, L, the green Line L tracks run above 63rd. The area consists primarily of small stores and restaurants, abandoned buildings, and vacant lots. Reporting detectives observed Port redacted East 63rd Street to be a single floor structure approximately 25 feet east-west by 50 feet north-south. A large elevated sign is attached to the front which reads redacted. The main entrance door to the business is located on the west side of the building with three windows on the front. Directly west of the building is a large parking lot which extends west to Vernon Ave and south to the alley. Wrought iron fences Wrought iron fencing, excuse me, surrounds a majority of the parking lot with the exception of two driveways for access in and out of the lot. A driveway is located at approximately 4 Redacted 4 Redacted East 63rd Street and also at Vernon Avenue. A city sidewalk runs along 63rd Street east to west from 447 East Vernon East to Vernon Avenue. Red crime scene tape quartering off a portion of the parking lot just west of the D-Train building. Inside the tape, reporting detectives observed a red and color Buick Regal facing northbound, bearing redacted. Said vehicle was illegally parked next to the curb directly facing, uh, the, excuse me, next to the curb directly west of the aforementioned entrance door to the building. A broom and dustpan with, with a long handle was on the ground in front of the Buick by the passenger side tire. The vehicle's rear window was shattered with pieces of glass inside the vehicle. Reporting detectives also observed the rear passenger side seat stained with apparent blood. Numerous cartridge casings were located on the ground of the lot surrounding all sides of the Buick Regal. Additional casings were also discovered under the vehicle on the sidewalk along 63rd Street and in the street approximately in the street at approximately 4 Redacted East 63rd Street. A total of 31 casings were recovered on scene. It should be noted that both 40 caliber and 380 caliber casings were recovered. Numerous fired bullets and bullet fragments were found on the street, sidewalk, and parking lot from approximately four redacted, four re through four redacted East 63rd Street. Reporting detectives observed pools of apparent blood in the lot next to the driver's side front wheel of the Buick and next to the passenger side front door. Apparent blood spatter drops were located approximately 10 to 15 feet north of the Buick. Spatter drops were also found in the eastbound lane of 63rd Street at approximately 4 Redacted East. Three filter cigarette butts were found on the pavement near the front passenger side and rear of, of the Buick Regal. Each cigarette butt appeared to have a fresh ash on the end. Detective Murphy spoke with Redacted on scene. The following is a summary of the end of the interview and should not be considered verbatim. Redacted. Parked along the west side of the store next to the door facing northbound. Redacted were also in the vehicle with her. Redacted into the store. Redacted stated she heard multiple gunshots in the area. Redacted observed smoke and then the rear window to her vehicle shattered. Redacted observed an unknown male run towards her vehicle as she reclined her seat back. Redact, uh, excuse me, when the, when the shooting stopped, re redacted people on the scene tried to put one of the victims in her vehicle, but quickly removed him. Beat 5804, forensic investigator, Ryan number 7636, and then we have a beat 5811, and these are all the technicians on the scene that are reporting. I'm gonna go on down past that, and they're just telling how the detectives approach the scene. Let me see here, we might have some information. Uh, Detective Serveka Detective, informed Detective Carroll that while processing the scene, he was approached by a male on foot. Said male stated to Serveka that his name is redacted and he saw the shooting. 
Redacted gave his phone number to Serveca, but refused to stay on the scene and speak with detectives. Responding detectives were able to view video on scene redacted. Reporting detectives observed numerous individuals both inside and outside of the store. Victim Hampton was sweeping the parking lot in front of the aforementioned Buick Regal. Victim Wallace ordered food and walked out of the store towards 63rd Street out of view. Numerous people appeared to react to gunfire in the parking lot. Victim Hampton was hit and fell to the ground. Victim Wallace ran back into the view of the parking lot and fell to the ground after being shot. Two males with hoodies ran back into view to the parking lot. Oh, excuse me. Two males with hoodies ran into the parking lot, both firing handguns towards the victims. Both offenders continued firing at the victims while they were lying on the ground. Both offenders then ran northbound out of view. It should be noted that reporting detectives also observed on the video an unknown male black wearing a white tank top take cover at the rear of the Buick Regal. Said male produced a handgun and fired numerous shots at the offenders. Beat 363, Sergeant White requested a copy of the above videos to assist reporting detectives in identifying possible witnesses slash offenders in this investigation. Reporting detectives agreed to email Sergeant White said videos. Responding detectives notified by assisting detective at UC Hospital that victim Wallace was dropped off in a Chevy Malibu, which immediately left the area. No family members for either victim were located at the hospital or on the scene. Responding detectives searched for additional surveillance cameras in the area of the crime scene. Responding detectives discovered cameras redacted for redacted East 63rd Street. Assistant manager redacted allowed re responding detectives to recovered recorded video from said cameras that could assist in this investigation. Reporting detectives viewed the video which did not show the shooting. The video was inventoried under inventory number and it is listed. Reporting detectives viewed video from City of Chicago pod number and it's listed 6305 South Yale. Uh, pod number six, uh, pod number 6817, excuse me and that is uh, Street 6301 South Wentworth, and number 6818, and that is on 6258 South Wentworth. Recorded on June 15, 2018, from approximately 21,400 hours to 22,100 hours, excuse me. Video from all pods showing nothing of evidentiary value at this time. The videos were ordered and subsequently inventoried under inventory number listed. Reporting detectives also aware of the city red light cameras located at 63rd and State Street. Video from said cameras recorded minutes before and after the shooting were also requested. Reporting detectives reviewed, received and viewed the video which showed nothing of evidentiary value at this time. The video was inventoried under inventory number is listed. On June 16, 2018, reporting detectives contacted the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office to inquire about family information of the victims. Responding detectives informed their family of both victims were earlier present at the ME office and notified of their deaths. Responding detectives immediately called Redacted, Troy Hampton, Redacted, DeAndre Wallace, and updated them on this investigation. This investigation remains open. Reported by Detective Carroll, Detective Delaney, Detective Murphy, and Detective Sipshin. Going down to the next set of documents, we have a lab report. Um, and this was filed on July 6, 2018. And this is a field investigation lab report. They still have unknown suspects. Male black. A list of description of the damaged vehicle. Pretty much the same information. All right, and now we're getting into the lab report. This is uh, investigation. This is an this is Area Central BIA lab report two zero one seven seven nine five A. The following information is a summation and should be and should not be considered verbatim unless noted. This is an Area Central Ballistic Information Alert lab report. The supplementary case report should be read in addition to and in conjunction with any other documentation pertaining to the RD number listed. This case was administratively prepared for the purpose of submitting a lab report pertaining to the listed BIA. Reporting detectives has no firsthand knowledge of these cases. This report acknowledges that reporting detectives received the listed BIA report from the Chicago Police Firearms Laboratory. 
Information from this report related that there is a high confidence correlation existing between fired cartridge casings recovered in the RD numbers redacted and one listed. The information provided by Chicago by the Chicago Police Firearms Laboratory is for investigative purposes and does not represent a confirmed connection between the cases. If any of the related information leads to court prosecution, an ISP report should be completed requesting a direct or one-on-one -on -one comparison be done with the involved shell casings. Report prepared by Detective Kale, Area Central Detective. And the next document we have is a progress report for the investigation. And we're going to scroll down a lot of the same information we know already. And we have another document and investigation. Uh, reporting detectives received information that a high confidence correlation exists between fire cartridge cases recovered under RD numbers uh, redacted and list one is listed, ballistic information report. Uh, responding detectives has reviewed the cases uh, the reports, excuse me, the reports associated with inv the investigations and learned that there are no known suspects at this time. Should further examination or comparative examination of above evidence become necessary, then a separate submission order for such work will be requested. The invest this investigation continues, report of Detective J. Carroll. And we have an additional uh, progress report. And we'll scroll through that. All right, and here we have, we get down to an investigation section and we have an RD number listed. We have persons interviewed, the section is redacted. They have a to be interview section and that is also redacted. We will start at investigation. Responding detectives again review surveillance footage from, uh, footage recorded from cameras redacted. Reporting detectives learned that there were a total of four working surveillance cameras. This is to be considered a summary of events. The times listed are the times displayed by the timestamp on the video. All timestamps are an accurate depiction of the real time. It should be noted that the video observed from camera number 11 was very blurry due to the camera not recording properly. Said video had no evidentiary value. Camera located inside the customer area of the redacted camera number 10. At 21, 24, 1500 hours, unknown male one wearing a black skull cap and white t shirt redacted. At 21, 2500 hours, victim DeAndre Wallace entered the D train. 21, 26, male one redacted, wearing a LA Lakers tank top slash jersey entered redacted. Then on the next 21, 29, male one redacted, wearing a white tank top entered redacted. 21 41 45 unknown male one with short black hair wearing a white t-shirt entered redacted 21 44 45 redacted walked into the redacted and waits in line 21 47 19 victim wallace receives his food order and walked outside redacted and the aforementioned male wearing a white t-shirt with short hair two unknown female one teens also exited the redacted with Wallace. 21-47-35, redacted walked outside with the aforementioned male one, wearing a black skull cap and white t-shirt. Camera located outside of the northwest corner of the redacted facing southwest camera number 12. 21-44-100 hours, west parking lot facing northbound. 21-44-42, redacted exited the Buick and walks into redacted. 21-44-41, victim Hampton appeared in frame walking from 63rd Street carrying a plastic bag. Hampton is observed sweeping the parking lot, talking to people passing by, smoking and drinking. 21-47-25, victim Wallace walked out of redacted along with the two aforementioned unknown redacted and the, the unknown male one with short hair wearing a white t-shirt. 21-47-37, redacted and the unknown male one wearing a black skull cap walked out of redacted. 21-47-39, redacted reacted to gunfire and takes cover at the rear of the Buick Regal belonging to vic redacted victim Hampton was struck by gunfire and falls to the ground. Numerous unknown persons were running in all directions. Victim Wallace 
ran back into frame southbound from 63rd Street. At 2147-44, Redacted produced a handgun and fired numerous shots towards 63rd Street. Redacted appeared to strike Wallace, causing him to fall to the ground next to the front passenger side of, of side tire of the Buick Regal. An unknown male wearing a dark hooded sweatshirt appeared in frame from 63rd Street holding a handgun with an extended magazine. Said male fired numerous shots at victim Hampton as he laid on the ground. A second unknown male with a handgun wearing a sweatshirt with a camouflage pattern hood appeared in the frame, also from 63rd Street. That male fired numerous shots at victim Wallace as he lied on the ground. Above male wearing a dark hoodie also fired numerous shots at Wallace while he lied on the ground. 2147-47, offenders fled on foot northbound as redacted fired additional shots in their direction. Both victims lie motionless on the ground. Numerous people approached the scene from all directions to check on the victims. 21, 49, 28. Unknown persons pick up victim Wallace and place him in the back seat of the redacted. 21, 49, 30. Unknown four-door vehicle with black wheels pulled into parking lot and approached the scene. Unknown persons carried victim Wallace to the vehicle and placed him in the rear passenger side. Said vehicle immediately exited the parking lot on to on 63rd Street. Reporting detectives searched the Chicago Police Database uh, Data Warehouse system for members of the Gangster Disciples Street uh, St. Lawrence Boys slash Jarrow City Gang. Responding detectives identified Redacted as the male one wearing a L.A. Lakers jersey who was with the victim Wallace when the shooting occurred. On June 16, 2018, reporting detectives were notified that Redacted was placed in custody for a traffic violation at Redacted. Was positively identified as the male wearing a white tank with a handgun shooting at both offenders in this case. Redacted was transported to Area Central and placed in interview room number three. Redacted was Mirandized and agreed to be interviewed by Detective Carroll and Delaney. The following is a summary of the interview with Redacted and should not be considered verbatim. Redacted stated that on June 15, 2018, at approximately 21.30 hours, he was at Redacted Restaurant. Redacted, DeAndre Wallace, victims. Redacted that, well, excuse me. Redacted stated that Wallace was the only person in the restaurant that he knows by name. Redacted stated that there were no confrontations of any kind before the shooting that he observed. Redacted stated that he had a handgun on his person that night because of recent shootings in the area. Redacted does not know the name of the person who gave him the handgun, only that he hangs out in the area. Redacted stated that he walked out of the restaurant with Wallace when a four-door black car, possibly Nissan, stopped on 63rd Street. A male black wearing a dark hoodie exited the front passenger side of said vehicle and fired numerous shots towards Redacted, ran behind a vehicle parked in the lot and fired back at the offender. Redacted stated that he only observed one shooter. Redacted did not recall which direction the offender fled. Detective Carroll contacted Redacted by phone on June 27, 2018. Redacted agreed to an interview. The following is a summary of the interview and should not be considered a verbatim statement. Redacted stated that before the shooting occurred, he was standing, redacted, talking to unknown female one who wanted to get high. Redacted heard multiple gunshots coming from the restaurant east of his location. Redacted observed either two or three offenders shooting at the victims. Redacted added that one of the shooters stood over a victim and fired approximately six shots into his body. Redacted did not know what direction the offenders fled or if they were in a vehicle. Redacted stated he knows victim Hampton from the neighborhood. Responding detectives made numerous attempts to locate Redacted. Never negative results at this time. Redacted was submitted for Redacted. This investigation remains open. Report by Detective J. Carroll, Detective R. Delaney. And the next document we have is a morgue report. Scrolling through to the document that has majority of the same information. Um, here we have the investigation 
and it says uh, ME2018028801, Unit 610, on June 18th, 2018, Dr. Howe performed an autopsy on the remains of DeAndre Wallace and determined the cause of manner cause and manner of death to be multiple gunshot wounds slash homicide chart pending over 20 plus gunshot wounds and here we have the autopsy report and you can see you know gunshot wound one here Two enters here and the exits all back back here. Yeah, it's just it's all unfortunate. And rest in peace to him. Scrolling down in the next document, it seems all we have is uh, just inventory items um, for the more crime scene um, pants. Just a lot of inventoried items and. I'm not sure, but this may take us out down to the end. Um, with all that being said, you know, this is still an open case. Um, seems like the officers did do some investigations, but not 100% of the witnesses were cooperative um, at that time, so their hands were pretty, pretty much tied, I would assume. Um, here we have technician was assigned to process a homicide crime scene with the list of location along with right and they're just saying these people were here with, as for support for the uh, officers and crime scene processing firearm evidence marked with crime scene markers number one through 48 was photographed and recovered from the street yep so just mostly inventory information uh, and a more picked up sheet and it seems like that's going to take us down. But like I said, man, this was one, you know, that, that has been, I've been anticipating on reading just to get clarity on and get, get myself up to speed on the exact particulars of the case. And it seems like they were on to something but didn't have a lot of uh, witness cooperation or let alone physical evidence um, that tied to anything. But anyway, thanks for checking in. And again, rest in peace to uh, STL Get Right, man, man, STL, man, man, uh, STL can't get right, man. Just want to say a big rest in peace to him and also Troy Hampton, who lost his life as well. Thank you for tapping in. Um, definitely subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you haven't. I will be dropping more videos as the requests come in. Uh, so definitely hit that like button and comment and, and subscribe. Peace.